Hi, this is Ben Ivey, the Fulfillment Artist. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to stop being a victim. So actually, what people don't know is that victim, being a victim is actually one of the strongest positions. Even though when looking at it, you can see, well, why is that? Well, let me give you a, an example using a drama triangle by Stephen Cartman. And this is, this is really interesting. I think you're gonna like this video. So let's imagine that I've got a triangle here. Okay, and here is going to be what we're going to call the persecutor. Okay, here is going to be the victim, and here is going to be the rescuer. Okay, so let's start with the victim. So the victim here is like, oh, poor me, feel sorry for me, this happened. Um, you know, this person left me, this person was mean to me, I got robbed, da da da, and they're in the victim. Okay. And the rescuer basically comes in and is like, oh, you know, how, how can I help you? Um, and they sort of come in to, to rescue the victim. They say, oh, you know, what can I do? How can I help you? And what happens is it creates codependency here. So the rescuer feels good because they don't have to deal with their own problems. They focus on the victim's problems. Right. So they're getting they're getting their needs met because they're like, oh, let me help you. Let me help you. Da da da. The victim feels good because someone feels sorry for them and then they get love and connection through their problems, right? So what happens is, is these guys stay in that position. And that's what often happens is the rescuer gets annoyed at the victim, but then will always come back to rescue. And it's, it's a difficult situation to be in and I'll explain how you can move out of it. Now, the last one is obviously the persecutor up here. So the persecutor often blames, they're like, oh, you shouldn't have done that, you shouldn't have done this, why did you do that, why do this, why la 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 la. Right? And that is the sort of persecuting perspective at the top. So what often happens is it may start with the victim or a persecutor, and then a rescuer will often come in later on. So it's an interesting triangle. Now, for yourself, when you're watching this video, where do you think you are in this triangle, okay? So you imagine it's here. Like, do you think you're always persecutor, or do you think you slip between the persecutor and the victim, or do you slip between like the rescuer and the persecutor? Like, where are you on the triangle? I just want you to have a think, because understanding where you are, watching the rest of this video will help you to be able to move forward when I, uh, when I tell you how you can shift out of these, these different perspectives that we've had so far. So let's move through what happens. So the victim, what do they need to do? They need to become more vulnerable and actually express how they're feeling and instead of focusing on the problems, to focus on the solutions, okay? The rescuer needs to become more caring. They don't need to solve every one of their problems, but they need to be there and act as a caring person as opposed to someone that's in their life and doing all these things. Now the persecutor needs to change from, instead of blaming, needs to become more assertive and asserting what they actually want and the outcome that they're looking for. So when you start to make these shifts, this is what will happen. The victim becomes a creator. So instead of, like I said previous, about focusing on what they don't want, they focus on what they want, and they start being able to move forward in a way that is forward instead of being stuck, because a lot of victims just get stuck, right? The persecutor can then be deemed as a challenger, right? Someone that is asking you to do different things, and then you can appease that to a certain extent, right? And once again, there's, there's a balance there, but they'd be seen as more of the challenger asserting what they want. The rescuer, by being more caring, then moves into the position of a coach, right? Where they sort of ask questions and help the person reflect and helps them through questions and from a distance as opposed to diving into their life. Now this helps solve the drama triangle that often occurs in our lives. So something that's quite cool is if you think about the different problems or situations that you're currently facing in your life, right? Put it in this perspective and see if you can map out, well, who's in this position? Who's in this position? And how is it that I could sort of help in my own position to move out of being wherever you are? And obviously in this video, we're talking about moving away from being a victim. So as well as this drama triangle, I want you to understand that there are actually a lot of benefits from being a victim, right? Another benefit is that they don't take risks because 
why why would they like no i prefer to just stay in my comfort zone i don't want to take any risks anymore and the, there's, a, there's a benefit of that, and they're always comfortable. So why would they change? And often what happens is when the rescuer constantly comes in, right, the, the, there's no need for them to change, right? So, so that's why often these victims stay stuck and stuck and stuck. Next is they get validation from people, right? So what does this mean? It means that they bond with others through their problems. Because a victim says, oh, I've done this and this and this. And then you come in and say, oh, I've had the same thing. And often, isn't it in life? Like we humans, we just bond over all our problems. Oh, this happened, traffic. Oh, yeah, I've had traffic. Oh, the weather. Oh, the weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just always on our problems, right? So there's benefits there in that you feel connected to someone through bonding through your problems. Next is it makes you feel right. When you're a victim, you say, yeah, well, they did this, they did this. Yeah, so I'm right. And what often happens is, there's, there's this sort of weird, this self-validation through what's happened that they are allowed to be like that, right? And, and you have to be able to shift out of that. And the last thing is that they don't take responsibility because a victim would just say, yeah, well, I'm like this because of all this. All this happened to me. All this shit happened, so this is just the way I am now. And that results in a certain benefit because then people have to take responsibility for you, right? So understanding that, that being a victim, although it's a horrible position to be in, there are a lot of benefits to it. And even though I've given you a few strategies through the drama triangle, I also wanted to give some more strategies to help you move out of being a victim. So the first thing is shift from scarcity to abundance, right? So what does this mean? This means that instead of looking at, oh, my life doesn't have this because of this, my life doesn't have that and I don't have a boyfriend now because all guys are crap and da da da. Instead, you need to shift to an abundant mindset. It's like, okay, what can I be grateful for? Right? What, what am I not a victim with? I don't know, I guess my health because I'm still healthy. Right? And, and moving into this abundance and a great way to do that is gratitude. Right? Some sort of daily gratitude, looking in your life, what are you grateful for? Helps you sort of shift so instead of constantly looking things from a victim perspective, you come from a more abundance perspective, and that way that will help you move forward with your life because you realize everything that you already have. Next is shift from blaming to responsibility. Right, so this is a big one. So victims often blame everyone else for the way they are. Right, well, this happened, this happened, this happened. Right, take responsibility. Okay, it was my fault. I probably shouldn't have chosen that person and chosen to stay with them for five years, even though I knew they weren't the right person. Right, I take responsibility that it's my fault because I probably shouldn't have eaten that much chocolate cake and then, I don't know, something happened, right? So we've got to take responsibility for everything in our life instead of coming from a place of blaming. And, and making that shift is phenomenal because you just look at life in a completely new perspective. And you don't have to take res responsibility for your life, but if you're l watching this video and you are still blaming things, Right? Just move out of it. Instead, ask the question, how can I take 100% responsibility right now? What would have to happen? And it's these shifts and it's these principles that you can live by that will really start to change your life. Next is shift from anger to forgiveness. And you don't have to do this straight away, but this is a transition. And often in a victim, they go through spouts of being sad and then really angry and then sad and then even more angry. If you can move from anger to forgiveness and say, you know, life is too short to be angry all the bloody time, right? Forgive people. People fuck up. We're human. That's, that's literally what we're made for. We're made to fuck up and learn. And we learn from the mistakes and then we move on, right? One of the best ways to understand forgiveness, because often we only look from our own perspective, is whatever has happened to you, just bear in mind that let's say a person's involved, that person acts the way they are because something has happened to them right? People don't come out and act like in a, in a very harsh or reactive way. They've had a certain type of environment that created that for them. If you can look at them with some sort of empathy, some sort of forgiveness, then it will really help you move forward in a way where you're no longer in that sort of just stressful anger state, but instead really allowing that forgiveness and that sort of love to spread through you. Next, shift your environment. 
So why is this really important? Because often in a, when we're a victim, we have a certain type of environment, we get, we get stuck, we do this, we do that, there's a certain type of place that we sit, or there's a certain place that we go, and we have these things that are sort of anchored in, and anchor being a place that we always go for the same thing, right? If you can shift your environment however you need to, right? Say buy, I don't know, something new, or just change the way the environment looks, or any sort of thing, or really help you move forward. Let's say you always watch TV in your room, I move the TV outside the room, right? There are, there are subtle shifts you can make to your environment which, which help you so much, I can't even say. It's just these subtle things that really make a difference. And even though I'm giving you all these things in this video, like if you don't write anything down, or you don't implement, right? There's no point even listening, right? Because it's just more wasting knowledge and you're like, yeah, well, that didn't work, I need to do something else. Instead, like really take some of these things and, and apply them into your life. And the last thing is shift who you spend time with. This is huge. Victims spend time with other victims. Right? You know who you are. You know who you spend time with. Right? I see it all the time. Someone will come to me and they say, oh, well, I don't know. I'm just really struggling at the moment with um, the guys. And I just, I'm just giving up. And I'm like, oh, interesting. So we, so we chat and I'm like, oh, so you don't spend time with So Oh, my girls, they're in the exact same position. Yeah, no shit. Right? Because you just become the average of the five people you spend most time around. Right? If you spend time with people that aren't a victim, shock, you won't become a victim anymore. Right? So you've really got to shift those people. And I guarantee you've got some negative influences in your life. So you either need to shift that and stop spending time with them or spend as little time with them as possible. Right? And with that, I really hope that you can move out of being a victim and you know, to really start taking responsibility and then shift looking forward at your life in a way where you know you can create something truly sensational because no one deserves to be stuck in a victim mindset and feeling like a victim for a long time so with that i hope you enjoy the video make sure to implement and i'll speak to you very soon